طرح ساؤنڈ اس ہے یا سو ٹوڈے آئی ول بی ڈسکسنگ اباؤٹ آنتھروپولوجیکل تھاٹ فار فسٹ ٹین منٹس آئی ول بی ڈسکسنگ اباؤٹ ہاؤ وی ہاؤ ٹو ڈو آنتھروپولوجی ایز این آپشنل سی ایز یو نو دیر آر ٹو پیپرس پیپر ون اینڈ پیپر ٹو ان پیپر ون وی ہاؤ جنرل آنتھروپولوجی جنرل کانسیپٹس ان پیپر ٹو وی ہاؤ انڈین آنتھروپولوجی مینس اپلیکیشنس آف کانسیپٹس ان پیپر ٹو اپلیکیشنس آف کانسیپٹس آف پیپر ون ان انڈیا از کالڈ ایز پیپر ٹو سو واٹ آر دا کانسیپٹس وی ہیو ان پیپر ون وی ہیو دا کانسیپٹس لائک لینگویج فیلڈ ورک وی ہیو تھاٹ تھنکرس دیر پرسپیکٹیوز دیر ویوز میریج فیملی کین شپ دس آل تھنگس وی ہیو ان اور ڈسپلین آف آنتھروپولوجی ایز اے پیپر ون whereas in paper 2 the same concepts we will be borrowing and we will be applying in the paper 2 the same thing means what so this paper 1 is called as general anthropology and paper 2 is called as indian anthropology first we understanding so okay so paper 1 is general anthropology and paper 2 is indian anthropology in this paper 1 what are all the concepts which are there in paper 1 what are all the concepts which are there as i told you earlier language field words etc but the most important concept is anthropological thought today we will start the lecture so in this particular lecture of two and a half hours or two hours or three hours i will be discussing about one school how to do the school and how the pyqs are will be asked how this pyqs will be asked so anthropological thought anything i believe in one concept called as why anything when we read we should question ourselves why we are reading this why this unit has been kept in the academics or in the UPSC or in the state PSC. For example, this anthropological thought have its own importance. In this anthropological thought, various thinkers will tell that their view, their perspective, how culture has been evolved, how family has been evolved, how religion has been evolved, how magic has been evolved, how kinship relations have been evolved, how family system has been evolved. This is one question. So in direct understanding, in anthropology, we will be understanding about two concepts. One is evolution of man biologically, evolution of man culturally. This combination is called as evolution of man. So in that way, paper one, we can understand in two perspectives. One is called as evolution of man biologically, evolution of man culturally. So anthropological thought talks about evolution of man culturally, how culturally man has been evolved. When we understand how man has been evolved, culturally then again discipline we will go which is called as evolution of man biological so fir evolution of culture kaisa hua e exact answer is absent like how evolution of man happened evolution of life how it happened we don't have the exact answer in the same way evolution of life how it happened we don't have evolution of culture how it happened we don't have exact answer so there are perspectives there are some thoughts one anthropologist will tell that evolution of culture happened because of this one other anthropologist will tell that evolution of family is because of this this perspectives these all perspectives together are embedded in one particular unit called as anthropological oh so the why kyon pad raha hai ye particular unit bole to we are understanding from the perspective of people oh culture might be evolved because of this culture might be evolved because of this according to this person according to this person so how many schools are there so first i will tell you so i am going into the anthropological thought which is unit number 6 before that we have evolution of man in an anthropology as unit number 1 which is called as biological evolution of man then we have culture society marriage family and kinship in the second unit in the third unit we have economic organizations in the fourth units we have political organizations in the fifth units we have religion and all these things constitute the part of socio culture anthropology and how these all things has been evolved from the perspective of anthropologists is unit number 6 then we go for seventh unit which is part of culture which is called as language language kya hota hai then when i am trying to understand the lives of tribes how i am going to do field work how i am means i will take the example as me you should also whenever you are reading you should think yourself as you you have to imagine education is nothing but imagination humko imagine karna padega oh if i am a early man how i will live if i am a primitive man what will be my culture 
if i am primitive man how my family will be there so we have to imagine ourselves then we can understand the subject properly in the same way when i am teaching also i i i, I teach myself as i am present in that particular situation so language studies hoga unit number 7 field work how we have to do the field work while well, we are studying about all these things comes under unit number 8 then genetics part will be there little bit only genetics part will be there then growth and development then fecundity and fertility then applications of anthropology this constitute your anthropology paper one so first today i am opening up with anthropological thought very interesting part why it is interesting why it is interesting because we are trying to understand from the perspective of people we are trying to understand from the perspective of anthropologists according to classical evolutionists culture is because of this according to historical particularists the culture is because of this according to diffusionists the culture is because of this according to malinovsky functionalists the culture is because of this so various anthropologists and their perspectives people will tell that anthropology is scoring we can get more marks why you know once you understand this concept the same you have to remember same you have to understand same you have to put it on the paper whereas in other disciplines in other optionals for example in other optionals we need to update on daily basis huge dynamism will be there huge dynamism current affairs daily aapko aapko usko add karte add add karte jana padega whereas this particular if you understand this concepts of total 12 schools finish aapka anthropological thought complete hua aur aap you will be using this anthropologist names and you will be using in another chapters so the first is about classical evolutionism ke bare mein padhte hain so how many schools are there how many schools are there the first school is called as classical evolutionism number 1 second school is called as historical particularism first we will remember how many schools are there historical particularism third we will go for diffusionism usme british wala diffusionism american wala diffusionism or german wala diffusionism american wala diffusionism german wala diffusionism then functionalism malnovsky wala functionalism structure functionalism rc brown wala structural functionalism 1 2 3 4 5 structuralism 6 culture and personality 7 neo evolutionism 8 culture materialism 9 symbolic and interpretative theories 10 cognitive theories 11 post modernism 12 so overall there are 12 schools of anthropology so first class we understood oh ho i have to study 12 schools of anthropology one one school one one school we will be discussing now the first school is classical evolutionism first school is classical evolutionism ए वाला स्कूल में थ्री थिंकर्स है ई बी टेलर हेनरी मॉर्गन जेम्स फ्रेजर ई बी टेलर हेनरी मॉर्गन जेम्स फ्रेजर द फर्स्ट स्कूल इज कॉल्ड एस क्लासिकल एवोल्यूशन हाउ मेनी हाउ मेनी थिंकर्स आर देर थ्री थिंकर्स आर देर ई बी टेलर हेनरी मॉर्गन जेम्स फ्रेजर इन प्रीवियस इयर्स क्वेश्चन यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट द क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस वॉट आर द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ई बी टेलर इन रेस्पेक्ट टू एवोल्यूशन ऑफ रिलीजन what are the contributions of eb taylor in respect to evolution of religion how the religion has been evolved it's important we also want to know how the religion has been evolved what is that i will tell you he gave one concept called as animism so the question is about animism so the same way how the culture has been evolved how the religion has been evolved the next person is called as henry morgan the third person is called as james fraser so these are the four anthropologists who are part of classical evolutionism eb taylor he is british henry morgan he is american james fraser he is british so we have three anthropologists one person is british wala another person is american wala another person is british wala so first person is called as eb taylor Edmund Burnett Taylor, E. B. Taylor. He is considered as first professional anthropologist of the discipline of anthropology. 
the first professional anthropologist of the discipline of anthropology number 1 number 2 he is considered as the first professor from the discipline of anthropology means by the time anthropology was been there but it was amateur naive no professor with full fledged knowledge on the discipline so this person is considered as the first professional professor from the discipline of anthropology and britisher and he wrote one book which is called as primitive culture the book was so much famous because of the book the eb teller got huge name and the discipline of anthropology also became popular if not the anthropology discipline was not that much popular because of his book primitive culture the discipline of anthropology also became popular and he is the first person who gave the definition of culture a definition a culture kya hota hai what is meant by culture what is this culture called as he is the first person who defined the culture and in his book primitive culture he is the first person who told evolution of religion a religion kaisa evolve hua what are the circumstances how the religion has been evolved and he gave a beautiful concept called as psychic unity of mankind this many contributions are there of eb teller one by one one by one one by one we will discuss so first is eb teller edward burnett taylor english anthropologist regarded as founder of cultural anthropology his most important work called as primitive culture regarded as a first professor of anthropology he is called as founder of modern anthropology and comparative ethnology called as father of modern anthropology and comparative ethnology I will tell you these words meanings also. Ethno ethnology क्या होता है? Ethnography क्या होता है? I will be telling the words meanings also. But as of now, so E. B. Taylor, Edward Burnett Taylor, British anthropologist. His famous book is called as Primitive Culture. He is the founder of cultural anthropology. He is father of comparative ethnology. Father of cultural, founder founder of modern anthropology. same henry morgan three things three people i told sir you should get a doubt sir ek banda british ka hai dusra banda america ka hai aur ek banda british ka hai ye tino log milke kaisa classical evolutionism ka school ban gaya these three people don't know each other these three people don't know each other but what happened unfortunately the thought process the ideas were similar for example we have left we have right left people are liberal left people are they promote so social justice economic political equity they will promote whereas right wing people they promote conservatism traditionalism they tell everything should go according to the rules and regulations so in this way we have two schools one is right other is left you might be somewhere in kanpur or you might be somewhere in hyderabad or you might be somewhere in kerala but when your ideology and my ideology come together your principles and my principles are meeting together then you will be called as left person i will be also called as left person or i will be called as right person or you will be called as right person based upon what the ideology the principles which we follow similarly these three people are from different countries but because of their ideology because of their idea similarities they are been clubbed together under one particular school called as classical evolution kya hai similarities that is what the school what is that similarities that is what the school all about. then you will get the doubt sir what is the similarities the similarity itself is the school so first person eb taylor second person is henry morgan american anthropologist one of the founding fathers of founding fathers one of the one of the founding fathers of modern anthropology he is known as the pioneer of american anthropology the study of human societies cultures and how they develop he was especially interested in ideas of kinship and the most important a important point rahega that is kinship he was very much interested in studying about the society kinship means our relatives how people will call the relatives how people will maintain the relationship with the relatives who are these relatives 
why we will be so much bonded to the relatives agar shaadi hua to bina bulaye there will be no relatives agar wo relative humne shaadi mein bulaye wo nahi aaye to humko bahut we will get very much angry and again we will not go why because he didn't came that much importance we will keep with our relatives so he want to study that why people are so much bothered about their kinships and how this kinship relations are there in primitive societies how this kinship relatives are there in modern society टूडे सोसाइटी में क्या है मेटीरियल पैसा एवरीथिंग इज मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड इन टूडेज वर्ल्ड ऑल्सो वी गिव इंपॉर्टेंस टू किनशिप वी आर वेरी फार वन पर्सन एज कॉल्ड यूर रिलेटिव एज कॉल्ड दैट एंड टेलिंग दैट यू हैव टू अटेंड द मैरिज वेर एवर यू आर यूर रिलेटिव कॉल्ड यू विल गो यू विल क्लाइम द फ्लाइट और समथिंग एंड यू विल गो एटलीस्ट यू विल गो एंड यूज अटेंडेंस सी आई केम वन आवर थर्टी मिनट्स और टू आवर्स वी विल स्टे देर बट वी विल शो अवर फेस टू एवरी वन एंड विल टेल दैट यस सी आई केम why 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 that much importance we give so he was very bothered about this kinship how this kinships came into understanding means eb taylor was focusing upon religion and henry morgan is focusing upon kinship he wrote one of the ethnography called as iroquois indians he is the first person he wrote one ethnography aapko uska meaning bolta hu main ethnography ethnography means for example this is one tribal community i am an anthropologist if i go to that particular tribal community and study their marriage their family their way of living their economy their politics their religion if i study each and every aspect of their culture and write a book on them that particular thesis is called as ethnography so he is the first anthropologist in the world to write an ethnography on a tribal community and that ethnography tribal community is named as iroquois indians a tribal community in north america so i'm giving you introduction the great people of the discipline of anthropology who belongs to the school of classical evolution he wrote first ethnography and you know no need to worry about the class notes i will i i believe more on explanation with lot of examples i will give ready made class notes print out this ppt is what is there i will make in the form of pdf and will i will be giving ready made notes you will listen you focus on the subject you have to understand anyhow i will give in the form of print outs to you unit wise unit wise i will be giving print outs in the beginning itself i will give so that where i will tell lot of example new examples which are not there in that you have to write as running notes third james fraser he is also from which country british james fraser a british social anthropologist influenced in the early stages of modern studies of comparative religion he is also another person who bothered about religion so eb taylor studied about religion henry morgan studied about kinship and james fraser studied about religion often considered one of the founders of the contemporary anthropology fraser was among the first to study the religion as a social activity that could be compared and contrasted so understand this ye aadmi henry morgan religion ke bare mein padhke religion ko compare kiya yahan pe religion ko log kaisa importance de raha hai wahan pe religion kaisa importance de raha hai yahan pe kaisa importance de raha hai for example i will tell you if you take is examples just as an example if you take the islam the people who follow the religion of islam they are very superstitious the same thing when we go to some parts of the country when we see the people who are following the hinduism they will be not superstitious they will be casual if you go to the christianity in north american continent in usa they will not be that much serious but the same christians who got converted into the africa and asia they will be super serious so how this religion is there in the minds of the people why there is differences with respect to the people's approach to the religion was studied by james fraser and he also studied about a religion kaisa evolve hua so he is more bothered about how the religion has been evolved so first form of belief system was magic from the magic people evolved into religion and religion people evolved into science how i had one i went near a magician everyone are telling that go near a magician you will clear your prelims you will clear your mains you will clear your interview mujhe aise hi hua a very good testimonial 
So I went and I asked him, sir, please do, do something. I should clear my prelims. I should clear my mains. I should clear my interview in my 2024 attempt. Chalo, come, bring me some lemons, give me some mirchi and all. We will do. I will do some magical things, and you will clear your prelims, mains, and interview. You didn't clear the prelims. Now you tell me. He failed or he was successful? He failed. In magic, what will happen? We will evaluate and we will put questions. Why I didn't fail? So, the status of the magician will fall down or the status of the magician will be the same? Will fall down. Why? Because there is no performance by the magician. So, what happened? In the initial forms, according to Henry Morgan, magic thing was there and magic was belief. But sometimes the magic was failed. And they came up with one belief system such that people would not dare to question also. In that place, so magic has evolved into religion. So in religion also that there are priests, but when we do not clear whether we will dare to question the priest, whether we dare to question the priest that why I did not clear, you told me to do this ritual, I did this ritual, but still I did not clear, whether we will question the person, no. So first form of belief system was magic. And when the magic was unsuccessful, then the people went to religion. In religion, what happened? Asking questions was not allowed. From religion, the next stage is what? I will ask a question, but I want a scientific answer. Hence, from religion evolved into science. So, this person he was very famous. Why? Because he told that it evolved from magic to religion to science. Chronology bata diya. So, first form of belief system was magic. When it was underperforming, then we believed in religion. When the religion was asked to not to question, then some of the rational people asked a question. Then they were being dissatisfied by the religion. Then the came the answer called as. So, he is the first man in the world in anthropology discipline who told the science has evolved from religion and the religion has been evolved from. Because of which he became. So, in this way, these three people are part of the discipline called as classical evolutionism, or individually we will go. So, complete see when I tell E. B. Taylor, when I tell Henry Morgan, when I tell James Fraser, there might be some contributions in similar. That is the reason no, I clubbed them together and called under one particular name. Kuch similarities to hoga. इसीलिए सबको क्लब करके मैं एक स्कूल का नाम दे दिया वो स्कूल का नाम क्या है क्लासिकल एवोल्यूशनिज्म में उसमें कौन सी कौन सी प्रिंसिपल्स है कौन सी कौन सी पोस्टुलेट्स है कौन सी कौन सी प्रोविजन है सो फर्स्ट वन व्हाट दे बिलीव्ड इज एवोल्यूशन ऑफ कल्चर एवोल्यूशन ऑफ कल्चर हैपेंड इन स्टेजेस बट नॉट स्पॉन्टेनियस so, what the classical evolutionism school believe karta hai? Classical evolutionism school ye believe karta hai ki evolution is not spontaneous. Evolution is stage after stage after. Like how you are first class, second class, third class, fourth class, tenth class, intermediate, graduation, post graduation, then you are here. So, evolution is not spontaneous. Evolution is stage after stage. And they gave the stages also. That is called as. Savagery to barbarism to civilization. So, first stage was what? Savagery. And the second stage is what? Barbarism. And the last stage is called as what? Civilization. So, the evolution is not spontaneous, evolution is. So, three people believed the same, hence, that is the provision of classical evolutionism. Dusra provision kya hai? They appoint that at the time, this school came in the year 1800. See, one more thing I want to tell you. This is chronological evolution, 1880, 1890, 1900, 1920, 1920, 1940, 1940, 1950, 1950, 1960, 1960, 1980, 1980. So, we come to what scientific approach. So, it is nothing but understanding the thought from the perspective of the people in evolutionary line. So, how it started in the beginning, 
at 1880 and how it end here in post modernism now you tell me whether the people who are in classical evolutionism will be scientific or non scientific in 1880 non scientific as they evolved from 1880 to 1980 they will become scientific or non scientific scientific so first we have to understand when we understand this criticism on this this will be there then we will understand this criticism on this this will be there then we will understand this the criticism what are the negatives are there then the next then there will be criticism for this what are the negatives for this henry morgan james fraser next they opined that 1880 में 1890 में क्या था अमेरिका में ब्रिटिश में क्या था रेशियल सुपीरियरिटी वॉज देर वाइट पीपल वॉज बीन किलिंग द ब्लैक पीपल रेसिज्म वॉज देर सो दिस थ्री पीपल बीइंग द वाइट पीपल दिस थ्री पीपल बीइंग द वाइट मैन दे टोल्ड दैट द रेशियल सुपीरियरिटी इज अ साइकोलॉजिकल मिथ सो मीन्स दे वेर अगेंस्ट वॉट रेसिज so they might be the white people in their books and in their philosophy they believed that racism is a psychological the concept of racial superiority is a psychological myth means what they are against racial discrimination they are against what racial superiority first one kya hai the evolution is not spontaneous evolution is stage after stage second one what racial superiority is a psychological myth third they advocated comparative methods and survivals of the past understand this third one they told that when you want to understand how the cultures has been evolved you have to compare wo log bolta hai ki how you evolved how you evolved how she evolved for example there is a person from forest who is preparing for civil services he is a tribe so his 10th class 12th class happened in some tribal hostel then he got seat somewhere else and now preparing for civil services there is another student there whose father is an ias whose father is an ips if i want to understand how this person was able to clear the examination the first attempt how that person is able to clear the examination sixth attempt how i can understand when i compare them i cannot judge so this person cleared in the first attempt this person cleared in the first sixth attempt this person is great i cannot tell why because this person's history is very good this person environment is very good this person got education very good why because parents itself are ias officer but this person came from the forest he is a tribal man he is a tribal person studied in tribal hostels government tribal residential school mein padha tha aadmi uske liye usko time laga so when i can understand if i directly tell that hey, which attempt you got the rank sir first attempt i got the rank hey which attempt you got the rank sixth attempt hey you are waste you are great when i will come to understand this when i compare so they told that there is a need for comparative methods comparative methods should be there then we can understand how the culture has been evolved. if not if i don't compare first attempt okay sixth attempt okay but when i compare their history when i compare their culture when i compare their background when i compare their surroundings then i can understand oh you took first attempt why because your parents are bureaucrats he took sixth attempt why because their parents are from the forests how i know that so this people told that there is a need for what approach comparative fourth point also told what survivals of the past survivals of the past kya hota hai survivals of the past some things you know i will tell you see there are some cultural things which doesn't have any net benefit but still it is present in the past and it is present today for example shaadi ke time pe mangal sutra mangal sutra pehnaya jata hai it is actually a men and women who are important men and women who are important 21st century where the education is there the men and women are educated in iits or iims or etc etc still at the time of marriage there is one object will be there when they tie that object the seriousness of marriage will be increased yes or no we know that see why why there is a necessity to tie this thread i am i am ready i am going to leave with you you are going to leave with me we both are in understanding why we need to have this thread whether we are telling like this or we are going for mangal sutra we are going for mangal sutra means what it is there are some objects there are some cultural things which doesn't have any net benefit but it is present in the past it is also present in the 
for example he this people studied in malaysia for some boats some designs are been made like some tattoos some designs are made for the boats when they are going into the fishing into the ocean they will once worship that particular tattoos means those designs on the boat and they will go inside the ocean for fishing when i am going for fishing what i want i want proper boat i want proper sticks i want proper balanced i should be very much skilled to do boating these are all the things which are required i no need to worship this i no need to worship this design but still i am worshiping means what which doesn't provide any net benefit but still it is present today that is called as survivals of the past which is called as survivals of the past so fourth contribution is what there is something called as culture survivals which is also called as survivals of the past classical evolution believes in comparison between cultures in order to draw conclusions about evolution of culture so four contributions amne understood kiya number 1 kya hai evolution is not spontaneous evolution is stage after stage second one is what very good racial superiority psychological myth third is what comparative approach there is a need for comparison fourth one is what fourth one is what survivals of the past or culture survivals fifth culture parallels fifth concept is given culture parallel is due to psychic unity of mankind very interesting but understand culture parallels is due to psychic unity of mankind what is this i will tell you understand culture parallels you tell me i am from hyderabad you are from where you are native from mumbai is from mumbai mumbai kar he is from mumbai i am from hyderabad he might be living in another geography i am living in another geography he is from west i am from below deccan he is human being i am human being finally afternoon 2 o'clock he will be hungry afternoon 2 o'clock i will be hungry evening 8 o'clock he will be hungry i will be hungry means what he want to tell psychic unity of mankind everywhere the man meets are same everywhere the man meets are same if those mans are living in similar environment uska environment or mera environment same hai wo mumbai mein hai wo mumbai ke forest mein hai main hyderabad ka forest mein hu wo bhi tribe hai may be tribe hu uska aas paas mein bhi forest hai meri aas paas mein bhi forest hai usko hungry mujhe hungry then what i will do first i want to fulfill my biological need what is most important biological need is food so he will search for food by afternoon 2 o'clock or after by evening 8 o'clock i will also search for food in the afternoon 2 o'clock or 8 o'clock now he will see nothing is available to eat he found one animal i found one animal so he will go for hunting i will go for hunting so this people want to tell that the people needs are same everywhere on the earth when this people are having similar environment then the response to satisfy the needs understand it the response to satisfy the needs also will be the same main kaisa respond ho raha hu wo need ko satisfy karne ke liye yahan pe bhi same rahega wahan pe bhi same rahega kyunki i need to fill my stomach and i have to move on so that response which is coming out that response which is coming out will be the same like he is doing hunting i am doing so that response which are coming out to satisfy the needs when the similar environments are when the similar environments are there that particular response is called as culture so mumbai may be same economic subsistence means economy hunting gathering economy subsistence food only in mumbai also economic subsistence hyderabad also economic subsistence hyderabad also same economic subsistence mumbai also same economic subsistence economic subsistence is part of culture so mumbai also same culture hyderabad also same culture when both are same culture can i tell parallels when both are same cultures can i tell parallels so culture so the fifth concept is what cultural parallels the culture parallels is due to psychic unity of mankind when the thought process is same in order to satisfy the needs that thought process is nothing but the culture so that culture will be the same when the environments are same hence the cultures are 
you might be in delhi i might be in trivandrum you might be in delhi i might be in trivandrum someone my need and your need is same you also want to get ias rank i also want to get ias service you also want ias service i also want ias service last year the ranker ias rank 3 for example uma harathi all india rank 3 she told that you read this particular book means your need and my need in trivandrum my need and in high, in delhi your need both are same what is the need to get all india rank so in that need this person told to read this book whether my response and your response will be the same my response and your response will be the same the response is nothing but culture when the cultures are same it is called as parallels hence cartler parallels culture parallel hello culture parallels this culture parallels is mainly due to psychic unity of mankind this is fifth see believed now why i will write this now you will understand see believed man needs across the globe are same food clothing shelter sex hence to satisfy the same needs the response in the form of thought process is also same hence culture evolved in the same sequence which they named it as culture parallels because of same thought process which they named it as psychic unity of man aap wahan pe ho main yahan pe hu aapka need mera need same hai और आपका एनवायरनमेंट मेरा एनवायरनमेंट में सेम है सो इन ऑब्वियसली और थॉट प्रोसेस आल्सो विल बी द सेम यू आर लिविंग इन राजस्थान आई एम लिविंग इन गोरखपुर यूअर्स इज आल्सो जॉइंट फैमिली माइन इज आल्सो जॉइंट फैमिली यू आर आल्सो इन रिलेशनशिप विद वन गर्ल हियर आल्सो इन रिलेशनशिप विद वन गर्ल अगेन यू विल थिंक दैट व्हाट द फैमिली विल थिंक व्हाट द फैमिली विल थिंक व्हाई बिकॉज़ देयर एनवायरनमेंट हियर एनवायरनमेंट्स आर सेम यू माइट बी जियोग्राफिकली डिफरेंट बट द एनवायरनमेंट्स आर सेम नीड्स आर सेम हेंस द रिस्पांस आल्सो विल बी द सेम that response is evolving in the form of culture culture bole to kya sir belief system religion economy polity this all together is called as culture so fifth contribution is called as psychic unity of mankind human cultures as a whole are socio cultural institutions in unilinear sequence they evolved from simple to complex homogeneity to heterogeneity savagery to barbarism to civilization so seventh sixth contribution is that evolution is in unilinear sequence evolution is in unilinear sequence simple to complex you tell me when you are in first class now you are whether in first class you are simple now you are complex accept it or not your behavior when your birth happened you were very simple as time goes on you are becoming complex or not so everything will be from simple to complex homogeneity to heterogeneity savagery is what man living like an animal then he became barbaric savagery new nude man nothing only eating no more no no politics nothing just he used to go eating living together savagery man time went on barbaric killing other people and he is satisfying his needs till time went on civilization have a peaceful life no killings you live me live so with the time is moving on whether we are moving from simple to complex as time going on earlier all are same like tribe now we are changing into heterogeneity one is muslim other is christian other is jain is other is buddhist so heterogeneity so there is a movement from homogeneity to heterogeneity simple to complex savagery to barbarism to civilization they believed one more most important point they believed victorian society as the highest stage of development this is heavily criticized they told that victorian society bole to british royal society british royal kingdom they told together they told that if anyone want to become civilized they asked so you are telling from savagery to barbarism to civilization no civilized bole to kya civilized bole to kon so civilized means none other than the victorian society british society in british society the royal kingdom and their relatives so if any society is becoming like victorian society that society is called as civilized society this was this was criticized but however that is a seventh contribution they believed why they criticized sir why i should tell that victorian society is the highest stage of development there are other societies also some anthropologists criticized it hence next to school main bola tha na chronology hence criticized it next next to school so seven contributions are there from this particular school 
नाउ यू टेल बी एक के बाद एक के बाद वन बाय वन सो कंप्लीट क्लासिकल एवोल्यूशनिज्म का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन नंबर वन क्या है वेरी गुड स्टेजेस बट नॉट सर नो सेकेंड क्या है एनीथिंग यू कैटल रेशियल सुपीरियर वेरी गुड एशियल सुपीरियरिटी इज ए साइकोलॉजिकल साइकोलॉजिकल मिथ इज ए साइकोलॉजिकल मिथ 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 मीन्स व्हाट रॉन्ग बिलीफ आई बिलीविंग दैट वाइट पीपल आर इंटेलिजेंट वी कैन कंपेयर विद इंडिया दलित आर साइकोलॉजिकल मिथ दे आर फिट फॉर नथिंग इज ए साइकोलॉजिकल मिथ थर्ड कंपेरेटिव मेथड्स advocate they, there is a need for comparisons comparative approach next savagery barbarism civilization which is also called as simple to complex which is also called as homogeneity to next culture parallels and culture parallels is because of psychic unity of mankind psychic unity of mankind next survivals of the past very good culture survival survivals of the past last Victorian society as one society where every other society aspires to become, or Victorian society as the highest stage of development. Victorian society. Think. First, okay. The question will be direct. Write about the contributions of classical evolutionists. Now you tell me. Write about the contributions of E. B. Taylor. Write about the contrib individual question. Write about the contributions of Henry Morgan. Write about the contributions of James Fraser. Write about the contributions of classical evolutionism. Same answer or different answer? it can be a school it can be individual the content is the seven points the seven points you have to elaborate with suitable examples so first one is what stage after stage but not spontaneous second one what racial superiority psychological myth third one what comparative approach fourth one what savagery to barbarism to civilization simple to complex homogeneity to heterogeneity next one what culture parallels because of Psychic unit of man can culture survivals, which doesn't have any net benefit, but still we are following. Last one, what Victorian society has the highest stage of development. Got it? This is what. First, we have to understand the contribution. We have to delineate it. Ah, cha, ye ek point hai, ye dusra point hai, tisra point hai, chhato hai, ye panchwa, ye chetu. Now individually, we will go in elaborate. So, E. B. Taylor ne kya bola? हेनरी मॉर्गन ने क्या बोला जेम्स फ्रेजर ने क्या बोला सो पहला बंदा ईबी टेलर व्हाट ऑल यू नो अबाउट ईबी टेलर फर्स्ट प्रोफेशनल एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट फर्स्ट प्रोफेसर ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी फाउंडर ऑफ मॉडर्न एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इन दिस फेमस बुक इज कॉल्ड एस प्रिमिटिव कल्चर नाउ वी विल गो ब्रिटिश एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट ईबी टेलर वाइडली कंसिडर्ड टू बी अमंग द फाउंडर्स ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी First professional anthropologist. Individually, we are good. Primitive culture is generally the tale's most important. Most important book is Primitive Culture. In his book Primitive Culture, he continued to the evolutionary study of culture in anthropology through study of religion. I told you he is famous for the study on religion, and he mainly famous for what? What is that? I will tell. You. Means he is classical evolutionist. Means generally, what are the all the contributions of classical evolutionism? He will be there in his. Plus, he might be giving something extra like animals. He told, "Man evolved from savagery to barbarism to civilization. Man progressed. How? From irrational elements that progress would eventually eliminate." so when he is moving from savagery to barbarism to civilization his irrational elements got eliminated and he started becoming more rational how much rational we become that much civilized we will be called as yes or no how much rational we become how much scientific we become that much civilized we call it so he told that as time goes on man started eliminating irrational elements and becoming adopting rational elements so in savagery the man was irrational he was thinking only about food and satisfying his need like if he is any having any sexual needs promiscuity random sexual activity means he is not bothered about relationship 
he is not bothered about any organized method he is he is like an animal when he is be, behaving like an animal means irrational man as time goes on he started removing irrationality adopting rationality removing irrationality adopting rationality so how he substantiated the concept that how man evolved from savagery to barbarism to civilization he started eliminating taylor gave a concept called as monogenism kya hai wo kya hai taylor's belief in monogenism so he told that generally they believed in psychic unity of mankind whether the terms which they give will be the same no no idea is same so we club it together and call it as psychic unity of mankind that psychic unity of mankind is named by eb taylor as monogenism so he believed that every man will be thinking in the same process that same thought process he named as monogenism taylor's belief in monogenism he believed that all human brains followed the same course of development an idea often referred to as psychic unity following thinking of german ethnologist called as adolf bastian believed that the widespread presence of similar material artifacts in diverse areas of the world proved the uniform nature of human thinking that same human thinking he named it as monogenism how he concluded it material objects he started comparing the material objects in europe the material objects in africa the material objects in asia how the man went for hunting whether the objects are same how man went to do fishing whether the boats are same so he started comparing the material objects when the material objects are similar then he thought that so why man will be making the same material objects so man is making the same material objects because the man thought process is same why the man thought process will be same in order to satisfy his in order to satisfy his needs that he named it as what monogenism idea psychic unity of man can be che but what he named it as monogenism he all he argued that all human beings would solve in similar ways the problems their societies and environments presented to them each new social order presented problems that had to be solved with increasing rationality so understand this the meaning i will tell you when i am savagery man i have some problem I have some problems what is the problem food is my problem eating food i want food that is my problem if i get food there is no problem no so when i am a savagery man i had my own problem my problem is getting food so i solved in my primitive way by doing hunting as time go on as time goes on as time goes on what happened the temperature reduced just example exactly what i will tell in the process but understand this temperature reduced when the temperature is reduced the lower animals will not survive only larger animals will survive and you tell me in the nature larger animals will be more in number or smaller animals will be more in number very good smaller animals will be more in number larger animals will be less in number so as the temperature changed cold temperature came smaller animals could not adapt to the change in environment only few larger animals were been surviving i am savagery man now i want to eat i want to survive if i want to survive up to now small size animals so i went and did hunting and i ate now i don't have smaller animals now i have what larger animals which is called as big game there is big game hunting big game are there now you tell me when the animal is of elephant size whether the hunting is an should be an individual activity or a group activity group activity for that group activity now what i should do i should make friendship i should make a plan i should design a plan either i should listen to him or he should listen to me human beings will not listen easily the dangerous species is human beings so making people will live alone but people cannot live in groups so when the people now he should make a design such that people should come together when the people are coming together means from individual to group living i am becoming rational why because i understood i cannot kill individually if i want to kill i have to kill through a group so i am becoming rational so now the problems which are faced 
the problems which are faced by the man started addressing the problem through his rationality. When he is addressing the problem through the rationality, his stage is developing from savagery to barbarism to civilization. For example, so I made a group. Now we started killing it. We killed it again fighting. This is mine, this is mine, this is mine. Now another problem. Now how should divide the food? Now another problem is how I should divide the leadership. Who is good man in this group? Who is behaving like a matured man? That person will become the leader and that person will divide who should eat how much. So political systems came into a world. So as the time goes on, problems were being surfaced. In order to solve the problems, he started addressing it through rationality. So evolution is nothing but addressing irrationality with rationality. Eventually the evolution also happened from savagery to barbarism to civilization. Means EB, same classical evolutionism contributions are same, but the answers provided by them are different from their perspective. For example, he just did, he told savagery to barbarism to civilization. It is because of addressing irrationality through But Taylor and other scholars of his era, such as Lewis Henry Morgan, psychic unity was based on biology, tied to the idea that humanity had to follow a single course of progressive social development. The traits and character of societies would become compared with one another to determine where each fit to the evolutionary scale. So now, both understood that, oh ho, there is psychic unity of mankind. There is psychic unity of mankind because of which man evolved. Then how man evolved? There is another question came. America is faster in evolution, India is delayed in evolution. Then if that is the case, then everyone should evolve in the same format now. Then everywhere it should be savagery to barbarism to civilization, everywhere should be in the same stage of development. Then why there is no same stage of development? Then they told that there is delay in the process of adopting to the environment. Some culture, some societies evolved quickly, they adopted quickly, some societies adopted delayed, so they evolved slowly. Hence, he told that there will be delayed evolution or there will be progressive evolution. So, people adoption depends upon their thought process. So, hence, one section of societies are quicker in civilization, some societies are delayed in Survival, he mainly told, survival is a material trait or social custom existing in a society that had no clear logical use and necessity within that society, simple. For example, one locket is there in my medal, in my neck, one medal is there in my neck or one locket is there in my neck. Somewhere I saw a student who is having the same locket. It is a material or non-material? It is a material, no? Then what happened? I compared the materials. I compared the materials. Then I come to a conclusion that, oh, you are also having that material, I am also having that material. So your culture and my culture might be same. But one more thing, this person analyzed it. Because of wearing this material trait, or social custom like marriage, they does not provide any net benefit. For example, when I am going to an exam center, I am going to write an exam center, early morning head bath, proper ritual, agarbati and all, on the exam day, nariyal thodke, compulsory, God, I know I did not study it, but still you have to pass, some magic should happen, whatever I darken in the prelims, OMR sheet, all should be right. It won't provide any net benefit. You know that. It won't do any magic. There is nothing called as magic. There, it is not going to do it, but still we follow it. So, which doesn't have any net benefit, but still it is present in the past and continuing today is called as survival of the past or culture survival. He also told the same. How he told? With some examples, I will tell you. See. This. E.B. Taylor ka uska khud ka example raita na. E.B. Taylor ka example kya hai ki? In the British society, in the earlier times, in 15th century, 16th century, the people used to wear this 
dress called as horsemanship dress. It is called as dress coat, C O A T, dress coat. In 19th century, the British, the E B Taylor noticed that when they are going for this big, big elite functions, the elite men used to wear this dress and they used to come into the functions. Then he got why you people are wearing this in 16th century, 15th century, they used to rode the horse. They used to rode the horse. So, this type of horsemanship coat is necessary so that they are using this, they used this in the earlier times. But today, there is no requirement. Why? Because you are not coming on horse, but still you are wearing it. So, he told that it is a symbol of status, it is a symbol of culture, it is a symbol of civilization. This dress is at that time it gave a benefit that. He can aramly, he can stand and he can sit on the horse and he can go on. But in 19th century, it is not giving any net benefit, but still people are wearing it. So, it does not have any net benefit, but still people are following it. Hence, called as culture survival. He took this example of this horsemanship coat and he proved that, yes, there is something called as culture survivals. Animism, very beautiful concept he told. Taylor defined animism. Taylor defines animism. What is this animism? Understand this. And out of the box, he did not do any field work, means he did not went anywhere. Just from his thought process, he gave this school, this philosophy. He gave a concept called as animism. Animism kya hota hai? He told that the first form of religion is animism. Man does not know about supernatural things like animals. Man does not know there is something called as God. But one question was there. After man dies, what happens to the man? Where he will go? Or if soul is there, where the soul will go? That was the first form of question which was been fixed in the minds of the primitive man. Savagery man. So, he want to answer for those questions. So, he was searching for the answer. Then what he did? Then he, E. B. Taylor himself gave one concept, which is called as daydreaming concept. What is this daydreaming concept? Understand this. He gave a concept called as daydreaming. Daydreaming mein kya hota hai ke? Aadmi so jata hai. So jane ke baad, wo apna soul dreams mein chala jata hai. Daydreaming, dreams mein chala jata. So, dreams mein kaun sa world hai, aur reality mein kaun sa world hai, dono different. So, the soul which entered into the dreams, they believe that, again when he wakes up, it comes again into the reality. But sometimes what happened? When the soul went into the dreams, they believe that, why? Because there is no accidents, nothing, no. Anything happens, health related only, it should happen. Olden days, um, 5 million years ago, 6 million, according to E. B. Taylor. It is not true. It is a philosophy of given by E. B. Taylor, a thought given by E. B. Taylor. So, the soul entered into the dreams. Early morning, he did not wake up. Next day also, he did not wake up. He, they will wait for 3 days. They will not do any funeral. They will not come to conclusion that the man died. They will not do any funeral. After 3 days, they come to a conclusion that the soul which entered into the dreams is not coming back. So, the soul which entered into the dreams has escaped into the cosmos. So, they will go for death funeral. Believing that now the soul which entered into the dreams has been escaped into the cosmos, that soul will be having supernatural power. So, if I worship that soul, I will get hunt, I will get rainfall. I will get animals, I will get everything. In that way, the first form of religion which evolved according to E. B. Taylor is animism, worship of souls. Which souls? Ancestors. So, in that way, the first form of soul worship is called as animism and that is the first method of religion according to E. B. Taylor. Then, people are searching about the souls. Kaha pe hota hai, kaha pe. So, the soul is giving water, the souls are giving trees, the souls are giving animals. So, they started worshipping natural objects. Hence, 
nature is worshipping water worshipping sun worshipping trees so next form of religion is called as naturism till people are not happy are what is this if agar aadmi ke roop mein hota ho to acha hota na so now what they did for trees they gave a shape for water they gave a shape for animals they gave a shape hence came polytheism hence came multiple gods called as polytheism then again people were been dissatisfied these many gods are there from where this god again they merged together and brought one more religion called as monotheism so in this way he gave the evolution of religion so first form of religion is animism animatism objects uske baad naturism uske baad polytheism iske baad monotheism general belief in spiritual beings refers to as the ground work of the philosophy of religion it is the most basic form of religion according to taylor in animism has two elements the continued existence of the individual soul after the continued existence of soul after we also believe the same and the existence of spiritual beings who affect our control even in the so two things i got it first soul after death and that soul is also having the power to control the natural events of the world it is also controlling the natural events hence we started worshiping that soul hence the soul worship is called as animism taylor proposed that this beliefs probably came into existence for practical intellectual reasons primitive people invented them to provide a reasonable explanation of death and of dreams thus he understood this element of religious belief as a kind of primitive science it is like a science why because they are giving answer e b taylor told that religion is nothing but a science why because i want answer after death what is happening the answer is soul worship and the soul is also having the power to control the natural events hence people started worshiping it hence he named that the animism is nothing but a primitive did you got my point answer i got what is answer see if i get answer it's called a science isn't it when i don't get answer it is not science if i ask any if you ask me any question if i'm answering it properly then you will be satisfied why because answer is science your your brain will accept my brain will accept if i tell something and if you tell this much only means your brain also will not be in my in my unconscious mind also i will also be not be satisfied why because i know that i didn't answer you you know that i never answered it but here what happened they themselves got an answer they themselves got an answer what is answer after the death of the man what happened to the soul and this soul is also doing benefit to the man like controlling the natural objects so hence the man is worshiping this soul hence there is answer for the question hence called as primitive taylor argued that human rationality progressed religion moved from the animistic belief in spirits of the dead and inanimate objects to polytheistic beliefs and then to monotheistic belief animism animatism polytheism and monotheism the progress of religion thus moved along with the general progress of a general progress animism savagery barbarism animatism or naturism civilization in today civilized world which religion we are following polytheism and animistic belief in spirits of the dead and spirits of inanimate objects was associated with the most primitive societies more advanced societies were associated with polytheism and the most advanced societies practiced with this is one more criticism he told that as the time goes on the advanced societies followed polytheism more advanced societies followed then they told that greek is also most advanced society but they are following polytheism india is also most advanced society india is also following monotheism but polytheism but you are telling that the most advanced societies are following monotheism it is one sided you are monotheistic person so you are telling that criticism see what is criticism you have to understand this whenever your brain is not accepting this theories any aspect is non science 
then that will be subjected to criticism. Why? Because there will be a keyword for every question asked. Critically evaluate, critically discuss, critically comment. वो सब का क्रिटिसिज्म लिखना पड़ेगा और बैलेंस्ड सॉल्यूशन लिखना पड़ेगा क्रिटिकली एवेल्युएट क्रिटिकली डिस्कस क्रिटिकली एग्जामिन को क्रिटिसाइज करते वक्त व्हाट आर द क्रिटिसिज्म सो एनीवेयर इट इज नॉट एड्रेसिंग द साइंस इट इज कॉल्ड एज इन योर जनरल स्टडीज आल्सो एक्सेप्ट दिस एनी क्वेश्चन एनी कीवर्ड क्रिटिकली एवेल्युएट क्रिटिकल असेसमेंट मींस इफ एनी पॉइंट इज नॉट रैशनल इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू So finally, he told, religion has been evolved from animism to polytheism to he linked religion another concept. He linked religion to ancient man's daydreaming concept of dual existence, green funeral and dry funeral. I told you, green funeral means for three days I will not do any death funeral. After three days, I will come to a conclusion that the man died. Then I will do go for funeral. That is called as dry funeral. So three days when I am not conducting funeral is called as green funeral. After three days when I am conducting funeral is called as dry funeral. Hence, after the third dry funeral conducted, the soul will escape into the cosmos. And now I believe that the soul is immortal. It is in the cosmos. Now this soul is also having. supernatural power to control the natural events another concept he told he linked happiness with three stages of development savagery man is less happier than civilized man according to him he told that savagery man you tell me animals will think only about Biological needs, and in that they think more about food. Yes or no? From morning to evening, they will be searching only about the food. Why? Because they don't know other things. So in savagery, man also man was behaving like the animal because of absence of culture. So his thought process was only with respect to food. So according to E. B. Taylor, savagery man doesn't have any time for leisure or happiness or enjoyment. so the savagery man is busy in searching for food so savagery man doesn't have any happiness as time goes on when we reach in civilization if i keep one hour or two hours that is sufficient to get food for me then remaining time i can use for myself remaining time i can use for my luxury remaining time i can use for my development hence uh, the civilized man is more happier according to make sense he linked the happiness with three stages of evolution savagery man is less happier than civil why because savagery man is busy only in searching for food he don't know about happiness also his happiness was food only like animals but as time went on food is one of the mechanism i want other happiness also emotional satisfaction becoming a leader or everyone following me so several things will come will make a man happier so according to him the savage man is less happier and civilized man is more it is subject to criticism i will tell you later so generally savagery to barbarism to civilization he is the first person to use statistics in little bit statistics also used he started comparing and he compared it up to now everything was bookish but he uses some numbers using numbers is science or not these are the contributions of E. B. Taylor and E. B. Taylor is very famous for definition of culture. What is the definition of culture? Culture or civilization, taken in its wide ethnographic sense, is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom, and any other capability and habits acquired by man as a member of society. The same thing I I written here, nothing new. That complex whole which includes knowledge belief art morals law custom any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society you tell me what is your culture what is my culture knowledge art moral belief material my dress material non material these all things are called as my culture but how i got this 
I acquired as a member of the society who my parents told, my brothers told, my friends told, my neighborhood told. So, because of all these things, what happened? Because of this, what I learned? Culture. See, understand. So, he gave importance to what? Acquired. Culture is acquired. Now, you are, understand, now you are getting the anthropology of knowledge, you are, it is inherited or it is acquired? You are acquiring it. I am giving, you are acquiring it. Inherited means what? From biology. Whether your culture is inherited or your culture is acquired. So, he is the first person who told that culture will be. Why? Because up to now, there was a belief that white man have supreme culture. Why? Because his birth happened in that family. So, the culture is passed from one generation to another generation. How? By blood, by inheritance. This man told, no, culture cannot be inherited. Culture will be acquired. That is the reason this definition which is mentioned in the book called as primitive culture became very, very race. What we know? In late 19th century, means 1880-1890, huge racism was there. He himself was a white man, but still he rejected the superior, superiority feeling of racism as a psychological. In the late 19th century, political controversies over the question whether all the races of mankind belonged physically and mentally to a single species, Taylor was a powerful advocate of the physical and psychological unity of all mankind. So, he told that man physical, man psychological will be same. The colors are according to the environment. If I change the environment, the colors also will change. If a man who is white man, if I keep in tar desert for 10 days, he will become dark. Or the black man, the negroid man will be curly hair will be there, bushy hair will be there. If any person does not do head bath for 20 days, his hair, also, his hair also will become bushy hair. So, everywhere the man physical things and psychological things will be same. Hence, there is nothing called as racial superiority. Hence, racial superiority is a psychological. See, today you know why because you are living in 21st century. That man in 1880 at the time the racism was very, very severe. People used to beat him. You are a white man and you are supporting black people. What you are talking? At that time, you know, there are some people you have to remember these people. It's like if someone asks me directly, I am if someone asks me, any Dalit is fighting for Dalit problems. I will tell that is not great. Why I will tell you? See, Abraham Lincoln is great. Why? Abraham Lincoln is a white man. He did not experience any problem. He did not experience any pain of being a black. But he fought for? Means compassionate. He is compassionate officer. Aapko IAS nahi banna hai. Aapko compassionate IAS banna hai. Ambedkar, he himself suffered. He himself experienced the pain. So, he know the pain. So, he fought for Dalits. Okay, fine. But Abraham Lincoln, he is not a black. He himself did not suffer the pain. He did not experience the discrimination. But he fought for the people whom he, are, he is not associated with. Raja Ramon Roy, apne padha hoga history mein. He himself upper caste men and come from a patriarchal system. He himself is a male but worked for female emancipation. He worked for women empowerment. He did not suffer. He did not experience the pain but he understood them. That is called as being compassionate. Rajo Ramon Rao is great. Abraham Lincoln is great. Why? Because same like this person. E. B. Taylor, he is a white man but he supported black. He told racial superiority is a psychological, hence he became popular. Why? Because he come from Lord family, Lords. Taylor and field work. The biggest thing about him is he did not do any field work. Means he did not do any, any society. He did not went from his home every time sitting and online only everything. Means reading books. So, he did not do any field work. So, he is called as what? 
हम सिर्फ बैठ के एनालाइज करना है बुक्स रिफर करके एनालाइज करना है सो इज नॉट रिगार्डेड एज ए फील्ड वर्क आंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट बट इज रिगार्डेड एज एन आमचेर दट इज अ वेरी बिग्गेस्ट नेगेटिव ऑन ईबी टेलर All though Taylor did travel to the United States and Mexico and visited archaeological excavations and sites in France, he depended more on secondary source. Secondary source means books. He more depend upon secondary source of information. Hence, he is called as amateur anthropologist rather than a field work anthropologist. This is criticism of E. B. See how I am criticizing. Any question on critically evaluate or critically examine for this? This should be the points. First one. He is called as his theory is called as theory of savage philosophy or theory of savage philosopher on daydreaming concept. Is it not already savagery man? And your philosophy is called a savage philosophy. You are a savage philosopher. You are a savage philosopher man. What is a daydreaming dream? The soul is going into the dream. It is not coming for three days. Then again you are going to conduct funerals. So everyone criticized him as theory of savage philosophy because not science no. Number two, no scientific evidence. Why? Because he didn't do any. Third, psychological studies says that primitive people are more happier than. Why? Because primitive people they will be more happy. You know, today I ate, I finish. I will not bother about tomorrow. So primitive psychological studies will tell that primitive people are more happier than. Very very important. They approach what comparative approach. His comparative study is criticized as ethnocentric. Understand this. See, same example. There one tribal boy, here one IAS daughter. I compared both of them. I compared both of them. When I start comparing, when I start comparing, I want result. Just think, practically think. I want result. I want few students. to get ranks because some people will respond some students will not respond so i want two few students who will respond and who will get ranks now you tell me i had a tribal boy i have a student from very good background and i want to get one student to get rank in 2024 whom i will choose whom i will choose either a tribal boy or this girl this girl why because i compared when i compared i will be calculative when i calculative i will be i will give a measurement as superior and inferior ethnocentric so this is superior that is so sometimes comparisons will lead to ethnocentric when i give ranking 10th rank first rank my focus will be more on first rank it is it not ethnocentric means i am neglecting the 10th rank student or not so that is called as ethnocentric you advocated for comparative methods the comparative methods will lead to ethnocentrism ethnocentrism means these people are good these people are bad we are good those are bad we are civilized we are intellectual people like white man's burden what is a white man's burden the white man will think that it is burden on my head to civilize you black people that is the reason i came to asia and africa you know what the colonialist told the colonialist told when they visited africa and asia they told that we don't want to come near you man but we came near you because it's a white man burden is my burden to civilize you people if not if you are civilized you no know, i would not come near you you people are uncivilized so i came near you ethnocentric we are superior you are inferior how i came to this conclusion but conclusion should be positive all the concepts all the subject will be in this format only concept point wise understanding then criticism then conclusion by early 20th century almost all anthropologists had abandoned research on demonstrating a single evolutionary sequence for humanity in spite of critics because of the initial works so however it got criticism however it got criticism but this is the first school which provided food and fodder for further research hence these are the initial anthropologists we call them as father of cultural anthropology call him as cultural This is about the contributions of EB. The same thing, आपको उठाना है, आपका paper में लिखना चाहिए. बस no more addition, nothing. There will be no missing out also. What are all the concepts which are there in all the books with respect to the thinkers? All the points I covered. 
in this way only all the subjects will be there, all the topics will be there in respect to the anthropology. So, first is E. B. Taylor, second one, entry mark, which country? Which country? American, Lewis Henry Morgan, now you see, one of the founding fathers of American anthropology, same, we studied this, founder of American anthropology. Pioneer of American anthropology, human societies, how they develop. He was especially interested in ideas of cage. Now I will go inside. Now I will go inside. Ek baad, ek baad, ek. His introduction. Louis Henry Morgan, American ethnologist or anthropologist. Ethnology bole to tribal society ko jaake padne walon ko ethnologist bolte. American ethnologist, lawyer, statesman, politician also, statesman, industrialist, philanthropist, among the founders of this many things are there for him. American anthropologist. First person, very, very important. E. B. Taylor didn't advocate for field work. Field work kya hai? Wo society ko jaake vaha pe padna chahiye. He didn't initiate any field work. E. B. Taylor. But Henry Morgan was the first person who told that if you are making any theory, the theory should be the result of field work. So, he initiated field work. When we do field work and give the theory, whether the theory will be called a science? He initiated field work. In his studies, Questionnaire method came for the, so kaisa field work kiya? For example, you are, you all are tribals, I am an anthropologist. I want to write ethnography on you people. So I came near you. Then I want your details, your marriage, your family, your culture, your way of living, your economic systems, your political systems. Then he invented a system called as questionnaire method. Questionnaire method like MCQs. If you have the script, or some diagrammatic process, if you do not have the script for tribals. So, he gave distributed questionnaires and the people used to submit the answers and he used to get it and answers are nothing but data. He got the data. In that way, the data collection used to happen in the field work and that for data collection, what is the tool he used? Questionnaire. So, he adopted Konsa method? Questionnaire method. In the process of he was the first person who initiated field work in his studies. Questionnaire method was mean. He also believed in psychic unit of mankind, which he named as germ ideas. Understand this. For psychic unity of mankind, what is the term given by E. B. Taylor? Monogenism. Monogenism. For psychic unity of mankind, the term given by E. B. Taylor kya hai? Similarly, the term given for psychic unity of mankind by the Henry Morgan is germ ideas. So, everywhere the man will be thinking in the same way at the time no chromosomes nothing now we used to think germs germs. So, germs were been same. So, he named it as germ ideas. In his book the famous book is system of consanguinity and affinity in human families. The famous book of E. B. Taylor is E. Primitive Culture. He had two books famous. One is called as System of Consanguinity and Affinity of Human Families. Described the evolution of kinship, how this kinship, studied about kinship systems, understood about evolution of kinship terminologies, kinship studies, kinship terminologies. And he gave two terminologies, one is called as classificatory kinship terminology, other is called as descriptive kinship terminology. Do not bother about it, I will tell it, will come later. But he gave two kinship terminologies. Ek ke naam kya hai? Classificatory kinship, dusra ka naam kya hai? Descriptive kinship terminology. He proposed evolution of society, evolution of marriage, political system. Means I summarized what I am going to, what I am going to explain, these are the main points. First point is, is a introduction. Second point, he advocated for Field work. He initiated what? Questionnaire method. Third one, what? Psychic unit of mankind. He's, what is the term given by him? 
germ ideas. Fourth is what? He gave kinship terminologies. He divided into two terminologies. One is called as classificatory and descriptive. Last one is what? Society of evolution of society, evolution of marriage. How he told, I will be telling you. First, first. There is one society called as. If you see here, North America. There is something called as Iroquois, one tribal community. He went here and studied the Iroquois Indians, everything about them, and he written their ethnography. And that ethnography name is called as Iroquois Indians. He is the first person who did field work. Where? Iroquois Indians. You should get one doubt. Sir, you are using the word Iroquois Indians. The name will be there here. Okay, Iroquois Indians. Iroquois, like this. In North America, Indians are called as tribes. In North America, they will call Indians, Indianas, Red Indians, Crow Indians, Iroquois Indians. Earlier name which is given for the tribes is Indians. Earlier name. Then the name changed to tribes, but North America today also they fall, they give the name for any tribal community after Iroquois Indians. Red Indians, Crow Indians. Indians means what? In North America, it is called as a tribe. So he did field work where? Iroquois Indians. Kinship and evolution. No. Yes. So here he did. Where? Morgan early work, the League of Iroquois set a precedent for American ethnography. European Americans had written about Native Americans during the 17th and 18th century. Most of the accounts were written from the perspective of conquerors and missionaries. Morgan's work was romantic and was relatively free of overt value judgments, focusing instead of description of social and political institutions. Understand this. Before him, other people also studied about the tribals of North America. But from the perspective of missionaries, from the perspective of missionaries, from the perspective of conquerors, not the perspective of the people. Means, if I am studying about the tribal people, if I am writing in ethnography, that ethnography should be the view of the people or the view of others. View of the people. Very good. But 17th, 18th century may be ethnography hua tha, magar wo wala ethnography peoples ka view nahi tha, wo ek conqueror ka view tha, wo ek missionary ka view tha. For example, I went, I am studying about a tribal community, there already Christian missionary went. So, I myself, I am a Christian missionary. I went and asked about, are you happy with the Christianity? Someone will respond negatively, but how I will write in my answer, in my ethnography, they are very happy, they are enjoying Christianity. They want to continue it. Why? Because it is the perspective of missionary. I am a British person. I came to India. I asked, are you happy with the rule? No, not at all I am happy. They are very happy with the rule. Why? Because from the perspective of conquerors, from the perspective of missionaries, before Henry Morgan, ethnographies were being conducted. But those ethnographies were from the perspective of conquerors and missionaries. Hence, those ethnographies are not scientific. But this person, Henry Morgan, written the ethnographies from the point of view of, if I ask you my feedback, please give me my feedback and I stand in front of you, right? Write my feedback. Then obviously you will write, sir, super sir, awesome sir, very good sir. If I hide and if I tell, you write and keep in that box, I will, I will look this side. Then, Sir, he is doing lot of overaction, etc, etc. <laughs> Reality will come out. Means what? Before him, the ethnographies were being conducted, but those ethnographies were from the perspective of... So, this person is very famous. Why? Because he took the view of... Unlike much previous work, the League of Iroquois was based on direct data collection, both through interviews as well as... So, hence, 
his works is most appreciated his field work is more appreciated why because he had written the view of people but not the view of conqueror or missionary the linguistic data from this iroquois trips and surveys became the source of system of consanguinity and affinity of human so this book he written from the source he got from in which morgan showed that all societies used distinctive systems one of the principal insights of systems is the distinction between descriptive and here he found that two types of kinship terminologies are there why because he is generally interested in kinship studies so when he is generally interested in kinship studies when he is bothered and he is studying about the kinship studies he studied about two varieties one is called as classificatory kinship system other is called as descriptive kinship system what is classificatory classification all our mother's age what we will call aunts all our father age what we will call uncles all our brother age brothers all our sister age girls are called as sisters generally classification classificatory all are classified so this type of system he noticed another system he noticed descriptive what father's brother a specific name father's brother mother's sister a specific name mother's so each and every kinship person is having a specific so he found the systems not only requires indians he studied several other societies but he started through iroquois systems iroquois society and he understood that across the world two systems are there of kinship terminologies one is called as classificatory other is called as descriptive theory of social next very very important he gave the concept called as theory of social evolution social evolution ke theory ke bare mein evolution ke bare mein ek theory bola wo theory ka naam hai social evolution wo ek book ke naam hai ancient society in that book he mentioned about how the evolution happened morgan went on to study the kinship study of native groups around the world and 1871 published what became the best known book called as ancient society he introduced this famous theory called as theory of social evolution on how societies changed he described three stages beginning from savagery to barbarism to civilization in the savagery period for instance society lives like hunter gatherers when they learn to start growing some plants themselves they have moved into barbarism means cultivation then civilization they started having some economic development so he gave a table which is called as now you see savagery barbarism civilization marriage 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 when savagery stage promiscuity like animals no relation nothing only needs i know no bond promiscuity random sex like animals time went on time went on then group marriages this is my group so marriage used to happen within the group four four men marrying four women then time went on it is first polygamy polygamy means multiple marriages in polygamy we have two polygamy poly means multiple gamy means marriage it is of two one is called as polygyny another is called as poly polygyny gyny means multiple women multiple women polygyny means multiple as wives andry means men what andry polyandry one woman marrying vertical line sorry horizontal line is called as marriage horizontal line is called as marriage polygyny gyny means female polygyny multiple wives polyandry andry means husbands multiple so he told earlier it was what promiscuity then what group marriages then what polygamy and monogamy and this today we are following what yes sir no? polygamy now we are following what monogamy same thing he told promiscuity evolved into group marriages 
evolved into monogamy eventually into why because in civilization both are there today whether both are there or not today means what 100 years back also civilization polygamy and then kinship earlier all are uncles all are uns all are brothers all are sisters now we are everyone is having a specific kinship terminology from classificatory to you tell me when you go to your village and you drop from the government bus and you start walking into your village someone will come hey how are you son in law one person will tell another person will come and tell that how are you father in law some person will come how are you brother how are you brother in law whether they will tell or not if you don't recognize they will ask, you are not recognizing me means in the earlier societies now itself is like this means how they all are relatives so earlier it was classificatory slowly slowly moving towards descriptive political system earlier band level politicalized then tribe level then kingdom level today state level a proper state level political system family no family system then we have group level then we have polygynous group all husbands wife staying together then we have joint family now today then it was stone tools then iron copper today so he told this patterns of evolution today you might be knowing but understand this is 1890 1890 he gave with his reasoning how the evolution happened with respect to marriage with respect to kinship with respect to political system with respect to family system with respect to technology and in his book called us in which book this people will tell that anthropology we have to remember more no concept will be there that book names only we have to remember oh this concept he gave in this book. like constitution article 15 you will tell that article 15 in the indian constitution you will tell article 15 in the indian constitution then the answer will become authentic article 15 means which article they will ask so at same like the concept of theory of social evolution in the book called as ancient society stages of societal evolution how he gave in ancient society morgan proposed that evolution of society involved the growth and development of institutions such as monogamous marriage nuclear family concept of private property morgan associated developments in this area with the stages of savagery barbarism civilization so today we reached what individual property nuclear family monogamy we followed individualism materialism so how the stages has been responsible for the stage of our family marriage political systems economic systems he told basic idea that would lead to modern notions of family political institutions and other aspects of society were present in the incipient form in all the human beings even those of the lowest stages savages he referred to those as germs of those. the evolution of society involved the expansion and growth of the germs and this resulted in the development of complex so he told that when the man was savagery his thought process is same his thought process was limited his germs of thought was limited as man evolved became barbaric his germs of thought increased as man evolved his thought process is increased yes or no you will get more marks when you write your answer in unidirectional or in multidimensional that means your thought process has been increased your germs of thoughts has been increased so when the man was savagery man his germs of thought is limited as he evolved into the barbarism his germs of thought has been enhanced as a man evolved into so he linked it with thought germs of thought our family will tell what they will tell our family our pa- parents are jyada socho yaar aur socho kyun you are you think about all the things means when we think more we evolve so that evolution is directly linked to thought process that he named it as what germ of thought the same thing is named by ubi teller as what the same thing has been eb teller named it as what monogenism monogenism mon proposed a relationship between diet and growth of germs of thought he told then how sir then how thought process will increase sir he told with the diet when i am hunting gathering when i am going for hunting i don't have time to think so i am going on hunting searching 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 i got food eat and again i slept tomorrow morning again food 
So, diet is directly proportional to thought. As I reached the next stage, cultivation, food cultivation, I am doing food cultivation, I am getting ready made food. So, I am getting ready made food, then I am getting time to think. When I am thinking more, I am evolving. As I reached civilization time, I got more time to think. When I am thinking more, I am evolving. So, he told that diet is directly proportional to germs of Yes or no? When we will evolve, when we think more? When we read one page and we have to stop for one minute, what we read once we have to think? Two ways, whether it is logically correct, two, yes, logically correct. Then how to remember? You have to make a mind map. You should not by heart, you have to understand it. Really, diet and growth of stages of thought and thus linked subsistence and evolutionary progress. Great periods of evolutionary progress were related to the development of different forms of subsistence. In Morgan's scheme, savage society was based on fishing and gathering of wild animals and vegetable food, while the domestication of plants of animals and plants was the basis for evolutionary advance into barbarism and a complete agriculture led for the foundation for Morgan believed that civilized people had larger brains than others. Thus, the process of social evolution at a biological basis. This is criticized, but he told that as the economic subsistence has been increased, man started having different forms of economic subsistence. So, his brain started increasing. As the brain size has been increased, this is thought process also increased. Hence, the evolution has been. However, it is wrong because, for example, Jack Ma, he said this this much only. Alibaba. Alibaba company Jack Ma, he will be very short, no, very short and thin. His skull will be this much only. If that is the case, then his thought process should be less. He is a founder of the corporate, the corporate commerce, e-commerce sector in the world. He is not famous for Alibaba. He is a famous for that structure, the structure of Amazon, the structure of Flipkart. Whatever e-commerce companies are there in the world, the direction is given by that person called as Alibaba Jack Ma. He will be very short. He said it will be this much only. But he is telling that as the time went on, the size of the brain increased. With the size of the brain increase, the thought process increased as eventually evolution happened. It is subjected to criticism. And champion of tribal rights, very important. What? He founded a local club called as the Grand Order of Iroquois. What? He was an advocate, as I told you in the beginning. He was an advocate of Iroquois. When he went to Iroquois to study them, he noticed that there was one company, mining company. Mining company was land acquisition was doing on them. So, land Iroquois was shouting, you are taking our land, land alienation is happening. So, he understood the problem of Iroquois Indians and he supported them in the court of justice. And because of his arguments in the court of justice, he requires people won the case. From that time onwards, he is called as champion of tribal rights. Members championed Iroquois rights to their land claimed by Ojidan company, mining company. In the process, he acquired more systematic interest in He went there to study, but they are already suffering with problem. First, he solved their problem. When he is solving their problem, he went there and studied them. After solving the problem, he wants to study them. So, he studied them. So, he is not only an anthropologist, he is also champion of. So, any question in paper 2, you can also write about Henry Morgan. In paper 2, we will study about tribal rights. How to protect the tribals from mining companies. So, you can write about Henry Morgan. Why? Because Henry Morgan protected Iroquois Indians. Criticism. Sir, his theory is speculative, but not how, how his theory is speculative, he did field work, now see what happened. He attempted to do field work, but he didn't complete it. He attempted to do field work, he know the importance of field work, but he, he behaved elite also. Means, uh, you tell me, if I went inside the field and I am studying, but the people will recognize me as an outsider only, no? Why they will tell the truth? Why they will come with original data? Why? Because I am outsider to them. How many, however he comes, he will be a 
then what I have to do? I have to go for participant observation. Means what? I have to go there, I have to be for long stay, I have to learn the local language, I have to learn the local culture, I have to wear in the their dress format, not for limited days, for a long time, then they start trusting me, then they will come with original. So, he did field work, but without participant observation. So, what type of field work is important? Yes or no? Participant form of observation. So, he attempted to do field work, but not real field work. What is real field work? Hence, speculations. Hence, speculation. He depended on secondary sources. Why? Because again, he went, but done, did not completed. So, again he took the books which are already written and he copied and he mentioned. So, he depended upon second resources. Ah, he did questionary methods also, but he did not completed. He attempted, he forwarded, but he, he cannot stay there for longer time. Why? Because his tribal society, within 2-3 months he came back. So, after that when he was completing the Iroquois Indians ethnography, he depended again on second resources. Is evolution stages are criticized as mere generalization, savagery, barbarism, civilization, for example. According to you, savagery, barbarism, civilization, if that is the case, then in 21st century, 2023, December 1st, tomorrow, there is one tribal community living in Andaman Nicobar Island by the name called as Sentinelis. They are not civilized. They are savagery today. They are naked today. They live like early man. But according to you, today they have to live like? Then why they are living like? Savagery. Hence, you are, your stages might be correct, but mere generalization. Nevertheless, whatever it may be, he was created with first fieldwork anthropologist. Apart from it, he was appreciated for advocating the rights of conclusion. This is about This is about clear. Any doubts up to now? We discussed about classical evolutionism, the contributions of classical evolutionism, and the criticism of the classical evolution, criticism of E.B. Taylor, criticism of Henry Morgan. Now we will discuss with respect to Franz Post. Sorry, James Fraser. James. First, we understood classical evolutionism contributions. Then, we understood about E. B. Taylor. Then, we understood about Franz Henry Morgan. Third is what? Introduction James George Fraser, British, influential in the early stages of modern studies, comparative religion. He also studied about religion, often considered one of the founders of contemporary anthropology. Fraser was another first to study the religion. He is most important for studying of religion. He is also a British anthropologist. What are his contributions? He is also a classist, classical anthropologist, anthropologist, trained lawyer, helped to found British anthropology in the 19th century. So, these three are called as early anthropologists. E. B. Taylor, Henry Morgan, James Fraser. British, he is Henry Morgan is country names you have to remember. A British anthropologist. He was influenced by Taylor's primitive culture book and stimulated himself towards anthropology. There is something called as radicalization, you know, radicalization. Radicalization of terrorism. Last seven years back, one couple in United States of America and California, both are software engineers. They themselves radicalized. By, you, by watching YouTube videos, they made RDX bomb balls and they killed 11 people. Self-radicalization, which is called as self-radicalization. He entered into the anthropology by reading the book called as Primitive Culture. He himself interested towards anthropology and shifted to self-radicalized to become anthropology. He accepted psychic unity of mankind. That is the reason he is part of classical evolution. 
and gave special emphasis to the evolution of religion, magic, religion. He considered British society as one society where every other society aspires to become means ethnocentric. He is telling that their own society is supreme society. But he believed that Victorian society or British society is one society where every other society aspires to. He also said about religion, psychic unity of mankind and he gave the evolutionary sequence from magic to religion to science. His famous book, Golden Bow, very famous book, Golden Bow. It is called a scientific odyssey of the discipline of anthropology. Totemism and exogamy are his famous books. The famous book of E.B. Diller, Primitive Culture. The famous book of Henry Morgan, System and Consanguinity of Human Families. Second book, very good, Ancient Society. Henry Morgan ka book kya hai, sorry, James Fraser ka, Golden Bow and Totemism and Exogamy. This is very famous. He never conducted field work, he totally depend upon Gar se bahar nahi nikla aya. Baitna bas books padna aur likna apna khud ka teeri jaisa. He never did a field work, he totally depend upon second resource of internet. But he gave his principle of magic. Why? Because he told magic evolved into religion, religion evolved into science. He, his principles of magic depended upon two principles. One is called as law of similarity, other is called as law of contact. How to do marriage, how to do magic, he told by two principles. One principle name is called as law of similarity, second is called as law of contact. You know, we have so many directors who do booth movies, Ram Gopal Orma, etc. etc. So, who is a teacher of this all booth movie directors? James Fraser. He gave two principles. One principle is called as law of similarity, other principle is called as law of contact. How? We will make small girl and she will be playing happily in the jula. Here one person will be their magician who will be having dadi and no hair, everything and he will be making all colors and nimbu, mirchi, etc. Then suddenly he will do to the doll and she will fall down. Means law of similarity. Then who is the creator of all this means? James Fraser, law of contact. If, I, if we want to do any magic, then a girl will be sitting in the car, her, her dress will come out and one person will come and cut it and he will go and give it to the magician and he will do magic on that cloth. So, the magic means this is this is theory which is given by whom? James Fraser. So, that means all the booth movies which came today are the copied version of who is the original content copyright holder? James Fraser is the copy holder for this. One is called as law of similarity which is called as imitative magic law of contact which is called as contagious but. So, in this way the people used to do magic, in this way the people used to do magic. Sometimes successful then no problem, sometimes unsuccessful then the problem came, then the magician credibility was being questioned. People were unhappy with the magic, why because magic will not work all the times, it will not work any time but sometimes if it works. Then they questioned the credibility of the magician. So, they want one belief system which cannot be questioned only. Then magician thought, I gave chance them to question, so they are questioning all these things. Then I will create one system, I will not give opportunity to question also. Then that will be a best system, best option. So, the next option is what? Religion, where you have to believe and you should not question also. Subhay ajao, ritual karo. Ritual hone ke baad, tumhara exam pass ho jao ge. Exam pass nahi hua. Phir humne gaya poocha ki, sir, mera exam pass nahi hua. Sahi bolo. Tum baat ki aake nahi. Whether you snaan karke aaya nahi, nahi. Something mistake is there with you, not with the belief system. So, people were not allowed to. Then again, people questioned the religion. They want answers for the question. When we get the answer, we will be scientific, we will be satisfied. So, from the religion, the evolved system is called as science. Hence, the evolutionary sequence, savagery people believed in magic, barbarism people believed in religion and civilized people believed in, but however it is criticized. How it is criticized? In civilized day today, 
we will believe science we will more believe in religion and we will more believe in magic for example stomach ka pain immediately what we will do ek nimbu jada do fek do kisi aur ke aur aur nahi to ek anda le lo rotate kar ko aur fek do kisi aadmi ke upar night 12 o'clock aur salt these all are what in 21st century also we see the people who believe in magic religion science but according to you it is a civilized society it should be only tabu fraser first significant contribution to the emerging field of anthropology appeared as two articles on tabu and totemism published in encyclopedia britannica in those articles fraser argued that taboos are sets of religious prohibition generated to maintain order in the primitive tribes well totemism involves a relationship between a group of kindred so he discussed about taboo and totem next big contribution taboo kya hota hai dekho taboo sometimes it is good like what according to a concept called as oedipus complex which is given by sigmund freud what is this in the process of growing evolving every boy at the age of teenage will be attracted towards other gender it can be a mother it can be a sister it can be a father it can be a brother so what our system will tell in every system is what our culture will tell culture will tell that having a thought itself is a sin taboo taboo means what social avoidance having a thought itself is a sin so we will not have our thought also why because it is fixed in our mind that thinking itself is a taboo social avoidance because of that what is happening the family as a social institution is evolving and the family is the foundation of society why because the family is happy why the family is happy because the mother can trust the son or the father can trust the daughter or the brother and sister can trust each other so so, so the family is evolving when the family is evolving then the society will evolve so society evolution is because of that taboo that taboo is called as incest taboo example ke sath bola main so in every society there will be some things which are called as taboos which are not allowed which are not avoided which are avoided which are not acceptable that is called as taboo. second is called as totemism totems will be there what is totem for example there is a tribal community called as bishnoi tribal community in rajasthan somewhere at the time of hum saath saath hai movie 1992 salman khan was very very young with him with him two young actresses were there sonali bindra and karishma kapoor so two girls were there open top jeep and he was riding he was very energetic young boy he was and they were telling yes salman you can do it you can do it and he he saw two black bugs he saw the black bug they were encouraging him he don't know what to do and he took the gun and he killed both of them both the black bugs were been killed black bugs are the totems of bishnoi tribal community it is subjected to worship it is their god they believe that the they came from black bug their evolution is from black bug they worship the black bug then the complete bishnoi tribal community came 20 years the case was running in the supreme court of india the salman khan was ready to give 100 crore in 1994 think in today's value he want to establish a black bug park in rajasthan but bishnoi tribal community didn't accept it because you need to get punishment why because you killed our totem it is not an animal it is our totem we subject we worship it you killed it the two actors run away nowhere for 20 years he didn't nowhere came into his scope he was alone he was fighting the case means what bishnoi tribal community for them what is a totem what is a taboo we should not do anything harm to the so in every society in every culture there will be totems and there will be taboo. for example in hindu social system snake is totem some people will worship it killing is a taboo there will be some belief when we kill that animal it will take revenge something stories will be there means what in every society there will be totem as well as well totemism involves a relationship between a group kindred means close people and a species of natural or artificial object tribe members gain union with the sacred and divine by envisioning the totem as a physical embodiment of the soul they worship so that particular physical embodiment is the totem and i start worshiping it any harm to that particular is called as 
so in every society in every culture there will be totems and but in a way it is beneficial why from that day onwards not a single individual dare to kill black bug black bug is a not a single individual dare to kill a black bug why because for salman khan itself this must be punishment for 20 years then what will happen to a common man means in a way it is protecting what environment Fraser also proposed that totems serve a social purpose. What is social purpose? For example, there is that you are believing in black bug, I am believing in dirt. So you are having a tattoo of black bug, I am having a tattoo of black bug. I saw your tattoo, you saw. So whether social, social cohesion will happen, totems also responsible for social purpose, social cohesion. Fraser mentions a taboo to kill or eat the plant or animal that constitute a physical presentation of godly anywhere the totem will not be killed why because it's a taboo hence in every culture in every society there will be two things totem and which he mentioned in the book called as totem is mine exogamy the best seller golden bow not only captured the imagination of general public but also influenced numerous scholars of diverse fields including malnovsky sigmund freud the underlying theme of the work is Fraser theory of general development of modes of thought from the magical to religious and scientific. Is distinction between magic and religion, magic has attempted to control events by technical acts based upon faulty reasons, religion has an appeal for help to spiritual beings and eventually evolved into the form of science. The societal evolutionary sequence is illogical and irrational. Why? Because according to you, it is first magic, religion, science. Savagery, barbarism, civilization. But today we are seeing magic, religion, and science. Hence, your fixed theory of stages is illogical and irrational. Malnovsky criticizes current British has got all three aspects of magic, religion, and science. Today also we have magic, religion, and science. For being ethnocentric, why? Because you told British society as one society, every other society aspires to become. Means you are telling British as a role model. Why I should accept? Means you are ethnocentric in? You are ethnocentric means we are great. British society is great. My society is great. That particular feeling is called as ethnocentric. And controversial in comparison of Christianity to other religions. For every religion he compared with Christianity. Fraser was desk anthropologist or armchair anthropologist. Desk. He never did any field work. So, he was completely called as an armchair anthropologist or desk anthropologist. His book Golden Bow is called as greatest scientific odyssey in modern anthropology by Malnovsky. His books empowered next generation anthropologists like R.C. Brown. Hence, this is the conclusion of James Fraser. So, what are the contributions of James Fraser? Number one, magic, religion, science. Second one, Law of similarity, law of contact, how to do magic. Third one, totem is a mind, taboo. Totem is a mind, taboo. This criticism and criticism on the, on the complete school. Tell me what is the criticism on the complete school? You told, the complete school told psychic unity of mankind. Is it really true? If people have the same needs, then it is necessary that people should think in the same way. It is necessary that people should think in the same way, not every time. Similar cultural traits due to similar cause or similar environmental conditions, but not because of similar. Means there should be similar cause should be there, similar environment should be there, then only similar cultural traits will be there. Everything should be Man evolved from quadrupedalism to knuckle walking to bipedalism to erect posture. How means according to the change in environment. If I want to get the same back, then the same environmental changes should happen, which is impossible. So, man came from quadrupedal to bipedalism, but again man cannot go from bipedal to, if that need to be happened, the changes should be 100%. Similarly, if that and there here we are thinking same means compulsory the thought might not be 100 percent. 
they show independent evolution of culture stage after stage was one side you told savagery to barbarism to civilization one sided if that is the case today also we have centralists who are savagery means it should be savagery to barbarism to civilization means in civilized society there should not be any savagery people but savagery people are living today also hence your theory is one sided classical evolutionists are criticized as amateur anthropologists and dream organ attempted but not neglected other like diffusion culture will not only evolve because of same thought sometimes we copy also diffusion i am speaking in english language you are understanding in english language english language is not yours english language is not mine our languages are different our mother tongues are different then why we are speaking in english english became part of culture today it is because of diffusion but they didn't discuss about diffusion bhi ek ek important cause ho sakta hai cultural evolution ke liye magar ab diffusion ke bare mein baat nahi psychic unity of man kind is are kyon dono aadmi kyon same tarah sochte yaar it's impossible how two people in two different geographies will think 100% similarly is just a general statement and psychic unity of man kind concept itself is means sir when i think it is true only no if it is 0.1% if it is not satisfying our psychology then it can be subjected to theory means what it should be 100% sat true then only we will call it as a but if it is 0.1% is also unsatisfactory means subjected to hence this is criticism on classical evolution the questions previous questions will be direct write about the contributions of eb teller the beauty of anthropology will be the write about the contributions of eb teller write about the contributions of james prather write about the contributions of henry morgan write about the contributions of classical evolutionism critically evaluate the concept of classical evolutionism write about the concept of animism given by eb teller very good for example p by q is animism 10 marker animism tell me animism is a concept given by eb taylor in his book called as primitive culture in the process of explaining about the evolution of religion in his savagery to barbarism to civilization the first form of religion evolved is animism next paragraph how evolved day dreaming green funeral dry funeral to address two questions after death what is happening to the soul so after the death the soul is entering into the cosmos so he got the answer for that and that soul is having supernatural power which is controlling the events of night hence we started worshiping the hence the first form of religion is but however it is criticized however it is criticized any scientific basis no scientific basis why because it's an amateur thinker just thinker he is so this is about classical first school of anthropology first so we completed what classical evolution is tomorrow we will discuss about historical particularism franz bose ne kya bola tha one school we completed today classical evolutionism i will give one question write down this question daily one one question i will be giving critically evaluate the concept of critically evaluate the concept of classical evolutionism given by given by eb taylor henry morgan james fraser so what what you will write 
introduction. So, introduction is nothing. Basic form of writing an answer, mainly for anthropology. Introduction, we will give direction to the evaluator that your demand of the question is addressed below. Classical evolutionism is a school given by E.B. Taylor bracket, British anthropologist, Henry Morgan bracket, American anthropologist and James Fraser bracket, British anthropologist. The three together have developed the concept called as classical evolutionism. Their contributions are given below. Next I will check below. Like that our answer should be there. Second, side heading, classical evolutionism contributions. What are the contributions? Number one, together. Seven contributions, eight contributions. First one, stages but not spontaneous. Number two, racial superiority. Number three, culture parallels, culture survivals. Next, comparative approach. Next, survival of the past. Next, uh, savagery, barbarism and civilization. Then, it, the question is for 20 marks. First page completed. First place, one and a half page completed. Then, E.B. Taylor. Only as a teacher, I explained you everything. Next, you should write only bullet points. He, he coined the term called as monogenism for psychic unity of mankind. Second point, he is the person who is responsible for the evolution of religion concept by the term, by the concept called as animism. No need to tell everything. If it is animism question, then you write everything. Then next, Henry Morgan, he is called a champion of tribal rights because he had protect the land rights of Iroquois Indians. Second, he had written ethnography on he requires Indians in his book, System of Consanguinity and Affinity of Human Families. Third, he is very famous for giving the theory of social evolution in his book called as Ancient Society. Then James Fraser, he is a person who told the evolution is from magic religion to science. And he told how the marriage can be done by law of similarity and law of contact. And he gave the concept of totemism and taboo. Then finally, critically evaluate, two pages completed. Now you have to focus upon criticism. Criticism, all the E.B. Taylor was criticized for this, James Fraser was criticized for this, Henry Morgan was and classical evolutionism is criticized for this. 1, 2, 3, 4 and conclusion. 4 pages complete. Got it? If it is 10 marker question, then you should not write individual contribution. You should not read. So, three people together gave the school to call as classical evolutionism. Hence, the classical evolution pro contributions are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and their criticism. 20 marker individually, 15 marker individually, but 10 marker to the point directly. Yes, that is, see, again there is no one best, best, one best way of writing an answer. It depends upon the marks. 20 marks elaborately, 10 markers to the point. We have to shoot. Evaluator, yes, you know, he know, he know, he know, he will give marks. In 20 marker, you have to elaborate it. Evaluator should understand that you know the concept. Okay. Thank you. We will meet tomorrow, 5 o'clock.